a, a couple of announcements for me. You'll hear a little bit more about this later, but um, I hope you remember that Jody Shoemaker talked to us last week about uh, our stewardship campaign. And today is the kickoff, and I hope you all have received uh, pledge cards on your email. If you haven't received a pledge card on your email, it's because we don't have your email. And we'd love to have it to be able to send you a pledge card. So please, if you're watching from home, or if you're here, help us by making sure that, that you've received a pledge card. The other thing that I want to talk about specifically, and you'll hear more about this later uh, when Mike Shoemaker talks, is that on the pledge cards, we've asked people to figure out something or several things that makes St. Matthew's unique and wonderful. So what about St. Matthew's is unique and wonderful? You know how birds have two wings that make them fly? But there are lots and lots and lots of feathers that make up those two wings. And that's what we want to know from you all. We want to know what the feathers are in our church that help us to fly. It could be big things like our youth ministry or our incredible music ministry. It could be pastoral care. It could be the different groups that we have that reach out to the community, like Riches of Grace. It could be any number of things. And you can have more than one thing, because as I said, it takes lots of feathers to make this up. But what we like in our stewardship campaign is to understand not only how much people are pledging, we need to know that, but we'd also like to know one of the significant things about St. Matthew's that you really love and that are important to you. So let us know what that is. Send it back to the office. We'll fill all those out and put them on our beautiful Phoenix that we have, and people will be able to see that. The last thing that, I, that I'd like to, to tell you about is that next Sunday at 4.30, we will have uh, a happy hour to celebrate the, the completion of our annual giving campaign. It'll be at 4.30 on Sunday afternoon. It'll be a Zoom meeting, and uh, we invite everybody to get on wherever they are and be able to celebrate with all of us as we celebrate our annual giving campaign. So with that, we'll continue on with our liturgy. I'll just remind you that uh, your parts are in bold up here on the screen, so please rise. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Join me in the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all the lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before us.
to Shechem. And some of the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abram, Abraham, and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through the, all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove us out, drove, uh, drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for He is our God. But Joshua said to the people, "You cannot serve the Lord, for He is a holy God." He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. He said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. The word of the Lord. Join me in the third song of Isaiah. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is on upon you. For behold, the darkness comes out of the land, deep gloom and shrouds the peoples. But only we the Lord are our eyes, and his glory is very good and our life. Nations will soon be the Lord of life, and kings is the guidance of their own life. Your days will always be up. I pray you will not be in the name of Jesus. And we call on you to be of the Lord.
reading from 1 Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do, who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you, by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will be sent from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Please join me in the song of the redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, pray to you today. I'm sorry, is there something in there in the middle? Oh, excuse me. Go ahead, go ahead and go back to it and we'll listen to the music.
song of the redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, the great deeds of the age you have done, surpassing the human understanding, your way of the earth and the earth and the truth, O king of all the ages, who can fail to do you all the time, Lord, and sing the praises of the name? For you are the Lord, the Lord. All nations of the world are here and fall down in glory, because of your justice. acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and redeemer. I can tell you a little bit about what Mike was going to say, and then I'll continue with my, with my sermon. Mike was just going to point out to us what I said at the beginning. Turn in your punch cards. We really need them. But he was going to give you a more personal um, view of why St. Matthew's is important to him. And that's what we'd like to know, is why is St. Matthew's important to you? What does it mean to be a member of this community? What are the pieces of this community that make it really important for you to be here? 
for this to be a place where you can express and you can find your relationship with God. So, so let me move on to um, what I was going to preach about. We just heard the gospel, and the gospel is a really familiar story about those ten bridesmaids, right? We all know that. We grew up hearing about that. Five of them, of course, are foolish, and five of them are wise. And there are all kinds of writers, there have been for centuries, who want to write about all the mysteries and the meaning of what this parable could be about. The only place we find the parable is in Matthew. That's the only place where it is. And there are lots and lots of writers who want to write, who want to write, write about what the meaning of the oil is, and what the meaning of wisdom is, and what the meaning of being foolish is. Well, I want to, I want to ask the simple question, what if there's no hidden meaning? What if this parable really doesn't have a hidden meaning at all? What if the meaning of this parable is simply make your choice and then be ready? It can't be just be ready because we have to know what we're ready for, really. You can be ready for a lot of things. Like, are you ready to win the lottery? That could maybe be your choice. Or, I've got one. Are you ready for a global pandemic? <laughs> I have to tell you right here now, honestly, I am not and was not prepared and ready for a global pandemic. Maybe you're ready to meet Jesus Christ at his second coming. That could be a thing to be ready for. But here's one of the things that we can be ready for that's most likely it is the most likely thing that we will have to be ready for, whether we are or not. Are you ready to die? I don't mean to be morbid, but really, are you ready to die? That's an important thing, because if you're ready to die, then that makes a difference in how you live. All the other choices that you make in life are made, essentially, once you've decided how you're ready to die. So, do you have some idea of what hymns or readings that you'd like at your funeral? Have you written your obituary and put a picture aside? People know where it is? Is your will up to date? Do you have a will? Do you have a living will? explaining to doctors and caregivers how you want your last medical treatments to be carried out. Those are really, really important things. And they drive how we live, if we know the answer to those things. Like, what do you want your obituary to say? Well, you get to choose what your obituary says by how you live, by the choices that you make in everyday life. Those are great things. But we can do some of those things. Audrey West, a seminary professor, wrote about her mother-in-law, who was 89 years old. And she was prepared to die. She had done all the stuff that I just talked about. She had a picture of herself. She had her obituary written. She had all of that in a vanilla folder in her desk drawer. It was easy for anybody to find. But one day, Audrey was completely unprepared to get a text from her husband. Mom was in the hospital. The doctors say she's going to die. Get here fast. Nobody was prepared for that. Nobody was ready for that. Nobody except a woman in the hospital who was dying. She was ready. When the doctors told her, you have a systemic infection, these are the things that we can do, she said, you know, it's my time. I'm ready to go. Don't do anything for her. Life. Just let me go.
she had also lived in a way that was prepared for this moment. Long ago, she had put together a list of the ways that she wanted to live. At the top of that list was, make Christ the center of my life. Make Christ the center of my life. And then there were other things on there. Be hospitable. Choose hospitality. Try my best to follow the will of God for my life. Be interested in other people, especially children. All of those things made her the person that she was. Made her into a woman to be remembered. But she did those things because they were a part of her being ready to die. And she had done them for years and years and years and years and years. One day after another, she was interested in other people. She was hospitable. She was kind. That's who she was. That's how she lived her life. We heard this morning from Joshua about making choices. It was his last speech to the Israelites, and it was a really important one. The last thing that he wanted to say to them was, who are you going to choose to follow? What gods are you going to choose to follow? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Who will you serve? And so I ask you today, who will you serve? And there are lots and lots of choices. We can serve money. We can serve fame, we can serve glory, we can serve being popular. That's a really cool one for teenagers. Let's serve being popular. What about politics? Is that going to be your God? A lot of people want to make that our God. It's easier to find enemies, people to disagree with, than it is to follow Jesus and say, love your enemies. We're called to love people who disagree with us. Not disagree back, and yes, we may disagree back, but we're called to love them anyway. We're called to find a way to be in relationship with other people. Whether or not they want to be in relationship with us, it's our job to try and be in relationship with them. That means we're the ones who have to go out of the way to be kind, to be nice, to be polite to not be offensive, to not be degrading, to not be demonizing. We're the ones who have to go out of our way to be kind. We're the ones who have to go out of our way, and I'm reminded of this because I looked at Peggy just now, <laughs> to laugh when someone says something really goofy, even though what we really like to do is tell them that they're wrong. But laughing sometimes is the best way that we can that we can make friends, that we can tell other people, I want to be in a relationship with you. We get to choose what we want to be ready for. But like the five bridesmaids, we need to make a wise choice. Okay, there's, that's probably not going to play. So we'll just go ahead to the, the creed. There wasn't another given, there was Okay. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the Virgin Mary. He suffered in the conscious heart, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into death. 
On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge those who live in the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. <clears throat> Have mercy upon us, O Lord, for all of our God. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. The Lord, we have done. Things done and what have done. And so, O Holy Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the midst of our life. To the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 
And now, without touching anybody you didn't come here with, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Gracious God of resurrection, health, and life, we give you thanks for all those who are working to rid our lives and our world of the COVID-19 disease that has harmed too many lives. We ask your blessing on all those afflicted with the disease and upon their families who care for them. Help us to move to a time when we share your love with all the body of Christ and to minister to one another in love and graciousness. Guide us to care for all those whose lives are in the trip of the link of flowers. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in this prayer written by Saint Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your royal Son that in two or three years after the death of this nation, you will be in this land. Fulfill now.
your concern for them and find a way to be kind and to be polite. And, and yeah, you can still disagree with them, but in the end, Christ needs to be the center of our lives. Always. Christ needs to be the center of our lives. Not something else. And anytime we choose to make that something else more important to us, then we've just said no to God. And I know that's not what we want, what we want to do intentionally, but that's what happens. So to say yes to Christ, we have to put Christ at the center of our lives, not other stuff. That's about the last thing that I, that I have to say about that. So uh, now, if you'll rise, we'll continue on with our um, blessing and dismissal. When we finish the final hymn, I will start letting people out from the very back of the church. And, uh, and uh, that's just how we'll do all that. So thank you for being here today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.